Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday q and I'm Eric Griffin, president of ITM Trading. And with me, I have Lynette Zhang, our chief market analyst. For those of you who don't know or are tuning in for the first time, we take your questions that you submit to us via email to questions at itmtrading.com. We take them, we put them up here on the screen in front of us, and we ask them live so you get a real, true, spontaneous, organic response. Mm -hmm. David B. asks. Okay. My question is this, if they create this digital illusion in which they can create as much money as they want, uh, how, how did they stop hyperinflation? So well, I guess it's a past mean, tense. How do they stop hyperinflation? Well, let me see. My question is, uh, if, if they, they can create, create as much, if they can create as much money as they want, how do they stop hyperinflation? Yeah, yeah that's exactly the point because the easier it is to create money, the more they do it because it's about spending and then the less value the money out there has because it's so easy, right? There's so they're not going to stop the hyperinflation. And that's why I said that if we do go to a CBD system, don't think that that's the end that, Oh, now they've solved the problem for exactly that reason, David, good, good thoughts, because they're, that's not, that's just a way to speed everything up, but them also to get you into that corral, so to speak, the central bank digital currency corral, where you're completely dependent upon them. So yeah, they won't. That's, that's why. Until there is a component of gold, verifiable, convertible, it's not over. And it's just that simple. It's not over. One of the ways that they've done it in the past is through the use of the world reserve currency being the U.S. dollar. So it creates demand out in the world. So we've always been able to print money and kind of export the inflation around the world. So um, if, for example, we lose that world reserve currency status, there's no way to stop that hyperinflation because all that money then comes back to the United States where there's the only demand is, is in the United States, which then creates the rampant hyperinflation. So they've been kind of, you know, petrodollar, world reserve currency, only trading. It's one of the ways that they've been able to at least print as much money as they have. I mean, we've seen it exponentially increase just in the last 20 years, right? Just in the last 10 years, 15 years. Yeah. But I want you to keep in mind that that the difference between inflation and hyperinflation is the speed of mm -hmm. the inflation. Once we went to a debt-based system in 71, the speed of the loss of your purchasing power picked up. Mm -hmm. Still and all, you know, it's picked up even more since 2008 and again, 2020. Mm -hmm. So yes, we did create more demand for the dollars and we did retain that status thanks to Saudi Arabia, who on the first, is it the first of October or the first of November? Do you remember, Randy? It's one of the first. It's either October or November is officially a member of the BRICS nation. You know, so are we going to lose our status as a world's reserve oh, currency? Yeah. Where ha have we already, right? It was already the end of, I think it was December 13th. I could be off on my date, 2000, when the Federal Reserve had to buy treasury debt. But they didn't talk about it because that's what third world countries do. That didn't become the thing to do and a good thing <clears throat> until the great financial crisis, 2008, 2009. And then it become magically a good thing. Like inflation was a dirty word, especially around 71 in the 60s and 70s, a very dirty word. I remember it. I was there. But all of a sudden it became our savior. So you know, it's semantics, but the reality is, is it's all an illusion. It's all an illusion. This is not an illusion. This is not an illusion. This has use in every single sector of the global economy. The rest of that garbage is an illusion. All right. So Harvey M. asks, <clears throat> If the fundamental value of gold is about 1,200, sorry, 12,500 per ounce, mm -hmm. 
then why do people say that gold is just a store of wealth, i.e. the story of an ounce of gold still buys the same fine men's suit that it did years and years ago? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You're going to be able to, again, speak to that a little bit better because I believe the fundamental value because what I know 100% is that all assets move, it, tangible assets, move from undervaluation to fair valuation to overvaluation to fair valuation to undervaluation in a constant loop, okay, in a constant loop. So if you don't know what the fundamental value of any asset is, not just gold, but anything, then how in the world do you know if you should buy it, if you, you should hold it, or you should liquidate it? So understanding that is critical, but there is certainly a growth component in the fundamental value and an ounce of gold. And by the way, being able to buy collectible gold below fundamental value is kind of like a no brainer to me. But when gold moves toward its fundamental value, right now you have all these other fiat money assets up here and even hard assets like real estate, income producing assets, severely overvalued. You have gold and silver undervalued. That's gonna flip flop. So I do get, because we all talk about it as a store of wealth and it holding your purchasing power and the spot market certainly has done that. You can still get a fine man, man suit for 18, 1900 bucks. Having said that though, there are some opportunities in here when you can hold your purchasing power intact through this trend cycle and convert some of that into those income predict producing assets when they're low. But I don't think the government likes us to talk about gold as a potential growth vehicle. I think there's, isn't there something about that? I don't know. It's been so long. Well, there's definitely an, an, like an opportunity, right, in that first bump up, right? From the, from the 2,000 an ounce to the 12,500 in fundamental value, there's mm -hmm. definitely some growth opportunity. Yeah, I can't. Once we get beyond that, it'll really show that the hyperinflation has kicked in, and then it should do what it always does, which is hold its purchasing power with, uh, with inflation, right? Um, but I will say that the collectibles generally tend to outperform bullion over the oh, long absolutely. haul or the spot market, mm -hmm. and therefore there might be even more growth opportunities in these, especially when demand heats up, because as demand gets stronger from the, the private market, meaning just people like, you know, you and I, not, not, uh, not um, like mutual funds and that kind of stuff from when the when the people want gold and silver and they buy more of this it heats up and it pushes the prices even higher that's why that's why it truly outperforms bullion because in those type of markets the demand gets hot and it's in a limited supply yeah and i'm glad that you brought that up because um maybe some of you have seen that costco is selling gold bullion and that it goes out as fast as they get it in. Now they are limiting, et cetera. But what that tells me, and somebody else was bringing this up uh, yesterday in one of our meetings as well, that that tells me that the public is becoming more and more aware, more and more uncomfortable, and looking for that true flight to safety. And I will be doing, because I've had a request for this, and, I, and it's been a long time since I've done the phases of a trend and how you recognize them. Um, so I will be doing that shortly. I will be doing that shortly, and that should clarify some of what Harvey's talking about, but generally helping you see the pattern of what all trend cycles look like. Not, not just gold, but all trend cycles. And that, that should help. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see. AT-OS6NB asks, what would happen if the USA declared the dollar would now be backed by backed and convertible with gold? What would happen if the US declared the dollar would now be backed and convertible with gold? Into gold. Well, what would happen is we would definitely retain our position as the world reserve currency. And everybody around the world would be flocking to dollars. Now, do I think that that's likely to happen? No, I do not. Right. Because when that happens, that puts restrictions around the level of debt that can be grown. And with our debt levels just in the one area, 
we're not even talking about the promises, Social Security, Medicare, all of that, but our public debt broaching and going above 33 trillion, and this is all non-self-liquidating debt. In other words, there isn't anything in those numbers that would generate income to repay that 33 trillion plus debt, right? So it's just like, kind of like a credit card. You went out and you just spent that money. Is anything you spent it on going to generate money to help you pay that debt off? Probably not, right? And that's what our government is doing. So if they backed and made it convertible, they would, they would fix the debt where it's not payable and the interest rate is compounding anyway. Well, and they wouldn't be able to borrow deficit spend all the time either. Exactly. So then the government wouldn't have the money it needed to do all of, we'd have to have austerity measures real quick. Right. But any country that would back their currency and make it convertible would become the currency to go to. They would get rid of all the crappy currencies that they could and go straight to the real hard money currency. All right. So Robert B. says, asks, Japan never went bankrupt. So America has at least 30 years plus to use the dollar, right? wrong. The reason why Japan didn't seem to go bankrupt is because they were the second uh, the second highest GDP country in the world and the whole world agreed to allow them what they were going through. This time everybody's going through the same thing and we're following Japan's failed playbook. You know, is, is Japan really in better position now than they were in the 90s or the early 2000s with all their yield curve control and this and that and the other thing? The answer is no, and their prices for food and other things that they need have indeed gone up, even though they make it look like not. Japan's in a world of hurt, so no, we don't have 30 years because this time it's the entire world that's going through it, so who's going to support everybody? So, yeah. All right. Well, that's that's all we have for today. Okay, And I'm going to remind you, if you have not yet done your your own personal strategy, click that Calendly link below. Set up a time to speak with one of our gold and silver specialists and get your strategy in place and get it executed ASAP because there isn't anybody that can tell you what's going to happen on Tuesday morning at 835, that that's going to be the loss of all your choices, but it could be. And I would rather be, I don't care how early, rather than even one second too late. And that that news is getting tighter and tighter. But having the right kind of gold and silver for your objectives is absolutely crucial and critical. Also, you do need more than gold and silver. So if you haven't done so yet, check out and subscribe to Beyond Gold and Silver, where we go over all the mantra pieces and even join us in thriverscommunity.com because that's where we're building a global community to help and support each other. Because frankly, we are all in this together and we've got to help each other. We've got to come together because the plans that they have for us are not ones that I want to see on my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren. You got to ask yourself that question. You got to play. We're in this for the long term. We are not in this for the short term. And don't believe the lies. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Leave us a comment. Give us a thumbs up. Share, 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 share. And remember, financial shields are made of physical gold and physical silver in your possession. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.